you know, it's an awful lot of fun to hit the ball out there a long way. Uh, in this case, hit it well, well past 300 yards. But I'm not holding lag to do that. Instead, I'm doing what I call an out throw. So right after this, let's talk about how to make a good strong out throw so you can catch up with your left arm, hit the ball a lot farther. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve from hititlonger.com. I'm on a mission, a quest for more power, more accuracy, off the tee, down the fairway, all the way to the green. If you're with me, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button, liking this video at the end if you liked it. So today we're talking about the power component, talking about getting more distance, and we're talking about the release of the club head. So there's a lot of mythology out there that says that you need to try to delay the uncocking of the wrist or hold lag. But I assure you, if you ever wanna hit it out there a long way, you've got to develop what I call the out throw. So really, in reality, what's going on is from the top of the swing, I'm going to throw the club. I'm gonna uncock the wrist and I'm gonna to try to throw away the lag. I'm trying to desperately throw away the lag. Um, the only thing that times it out correctly is, as I'm trying to throw away the lag, is that I'm shifting and turning my body in a good pivot at the same time and that timing is just slightly out in front of the throw but my intent is to throw it right from the word go from the top of the swing that's my intent so let's go over a couple of drills that are going to help you develop your out throw and hopefully this concept is going to be able to get you longer straighter down the fairway Okay, we've turned the camera to this new angle so that I can utilize this little pole here. I've got my trusty speed whoosh out. I really like doing this exercise uh, with one of these first uh, because of the way the ball slides up and down here. Um, if you don't have one of these, you'd like one, pick one up from over at my website. I've left a link in the description below and I sell them for a little cheaper than Amazon. Just a little free advertising. Um, so what I'll do here is I'm going to line up the pole with the center of my body like this and I'm going to put my arm out like this and the goal is to pop the ball out to the end of the stick and wrap it around the pole while never hitting my elbow against the pole. So that would look something like this. I'm going to do it just with my left arm this way. So you see, I'm gonna to have to, to apply a force of centrifugal force, an outward seeking force, in order to get the ball traveling out to the outside and pop against the tip like that. So it has to be pretty abrupt, pretty good amount of force to get it to pop. Now you see what this pull prevents me from doing is trying to pull the handle of the club, which a lot of people think that you're supposed to do if you want to get a lot of power into a golf swing is you're gonna gonna try to pull this end of the stick at the ball you see I'm gonna hit my elbow on the pole here and you see if I didn't have a pole here see I will never make this ball out outwardly seek if I'm pulling the handle see the, the, the ball is just staying here it's only traveling traveling linearly at the same speed as I'm pulling the handle we can never get that outward force unless we throw out. You hear the pop there? Just like that. Mike, do you face. attempt to delay the uncocking of the wrists and the hands on the downswing? I certainly do not. This is where I get to jump on almost anyone when I try to hit the ball. When I move my, my weight over here and my shoulders rotate in this manner, I give the club a throw so it will catch up. Your stimulus begins right here. Everything works as a unit with the hands trying to work faster than the arms so they can't take up the slack that's, that's in the bend of the wrist, what we call the cock of the hand. The Do your hands cock. cross over on impact? They don't cross over at impact, they cross over after impact. They're square, they're right in line. Palm on the, of the left hand on the front of the shaft, palm of the right hand on the back of the shaft. Face square to the intended line of flight. How and important? after the... Oh, excuse me. 
And after the crossover, I mean, after the hit, the hands, the right hand crosses over the left hand, then the elbows fold and dump it, dump it over your back. If you've ever followed Mike Austin, this is his snowbank story, where the snowbank would be here. You could also say it's a clothesline uh, with a big rug hanging down. You've got to beat the dust off of a rug. With two arms, it would look like this. And see, I'm never hitting my elbow against the, the mud or the clothesline that way. And I'm getting a good, strong out throw. Take it back even further and out throw. Okay, so I'm trying to throw the energy outwards away from my sternum out into space. Okay, now with the magic of video editing, I've got my driver. And I'm going to do the same exercise, just around and out, out. So it's like I'm pushing the elbow out. I'm trying to throw back here. And then I let momentum just take it all the way around and out. So you can see in that exercise, I'm really trying to throw away the angle. The reason is I'm trying to get the club head and the club shaft to catch up to the left arm by the time it reaches the ball. Heck, I'd even love to see the club head pass the arm and the shaft pass the arm in the hand because in that case, the club will start turning upwards and I can get that nice positive angle of attack that I'm always talking about in other videos. So here I'm gonna hit another ball for you again. From way back here, I'm not gonna to try to pull. I'm not gonna to try to hold. I'm going to try to throw outwards, uncock the wrists, send the club around 180 degrees in a semicircle. And let me show you one. And not only is that far, well over 300 yards, but it was really laser straight too. Uh, so you just gotta get this move into your swing. Let's look at it again one more time from the face on angle. Okay, so from this angle, you're definitely going to see the optical illusion where you'll swear you're watching it. You think that I'm holding the lag, delaying the cocking of the wrist. But I promise you, if we were to be able to measure like they can now and in, in, in using, um, you know, super advanced uh, 3D graphics and, and video and everything, um, I'm, I am doing this. I'm doing that right about from shoulder high trying to throw the club in 180 degree. That's the action that I'm intending on making, but you're gonna see something else when we slow it down because the way that I'm adding the body action into it, uh, you'll see an appearance of lag instead. Let me show you. It's the shifting and turning of my body which causes that slight delay in the response of the arm or the club shaft catching up with my left arm to where I am here actually bottoming out on these shots about five or six inches behind the ball, turned out of the way, hitting up on them as the club head is passing my hand and turning upwards again. I can only do that if I'm making the initial toss action outwards from way back here. If I were to hold it, I will never be able to catch up on time. The only way I'd be able to save it from here if I were really holding this lag is pivot backwards, almost throw myself backwards 
would be the only way that I could force the club through and give it the torque it would need at that last second to save it. So hey, give that out throw a try. It looks just like this. See how I'm not advancing my upper left arm, nor am I trying to slow down or delay the throwing action of the club head around the handle 180 degrees. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll consider becoming a subscriber. Like this video if you liked it. And hey, I'll either see you in the next video or maybe longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.